Good evening, everyone. There's a lot of people for this small screen. So, so today is going to be about Azure multi-factor authentication. So, how many of you have already started using multi-factor authentication? Wow. You're all above average because the average is really, really, really bad. So a lot of people are not, haven't even started. So my name is uh, Jan Ketris Konke. I'm from Norway. I'm an Enterprise Mobility MVP. And we're going to talk about why is multi-factor authentication really important. So up on this screen, I have some numbers from last year. And what these numbers tell us is that we have every day there was 7.1 million records stolen. 300,000 per hour and down to 82 records per second. 69% of those stolen records were stolen because of, guess what? Breached identities. Meaning, if we just get multi-factor authentication in place, we would be able to reduce that number really good. One of the problems with enabling multi-factor authentication is that you can experience bad user experience. We don't want this, right? We don't want frustrated users not being able to be productive while we enable multi-factor authentication. So if you do it uh, the old way, you have a lot of issues with uh, users having to use app passwords. You need to apply multi-factor way too often. So what we want to achieve is that the users apply multi-factor without even touching their productivity. So making sure the user can stay productive even though we enable multi-factor authentication. So, where do we start? I'm going to give you four steps to enable multi-factor, what I think is the right way. So, the first step, we need to have a break the glass admin. Next step, we need to enable modern authentication on all our services. Second, we need to have conditional access. And last but not least, we need to use Microsoft Intune to make sure we can control the devices. So let's start with number one. Why do we need a break the glass admin? Well, this is simple, because if everything else breaks and you need to get into your tenant, you need to have a backdoor for yourself. So this is done by just creating a global admin account in the cloud. It's not a synced account, it needs to be in the cloud. You need to make it permanent admin, no privileged identity management on this user. We need to accept it from all conditional access policies and all MFA requirements. Also, of course, we need a complex password and lock it away. This user should never be used except in case of emergency. So having auditing on following up what happens with this user if somebody uses it, this is not a personal user, so we need to follow up what happens with this user. Step two, we need to enable modern authentication. So we need to enable it on all the Office 365 services we are trying to access. That is Exchange, it's Skype, Teams, SharePoint. We need to make sure they all support modern authentication. If we can, we would like to disable legacy authentication on the service itself as well. We also make, need make, to make sure that all the clients we use supports modern auth. No more Office 2010. No pop clients or EMAP. You need to use a modern app like Outlook. You need to use Office 365 Pro Plus that's updated and current to be able to use modern authentication all, at all times. And of course, for the admins, 
the IT guys, we also need to make sure they have PowerShell modules to be able to do the PowerShell work that supports MFA as well. So here are some few examples of some PowerShell commands to make sure your services supports modern authentication. If you set up a new tenant today, that tenant will support modern auth on all the services. But if your tenant is one and a half, two years old, this may not be turned on, which means you need to verify that this is your scenario. And the one on the bottom here, the slide's going to be available, so don't worry. The one on the bottom here is for a special uh, hybrid setup where you use Skype for business server on-prem, which is not set up to use modern auth to make Skype be able to use modern auth to exchange online, but still use basic auth to your on-prem server, you need to apply a specific Skype for Business policy to your users. So the way to verify, there are also some simple commands to verify this. And what we want to see, of course, is that OAuth is enabled on the service. That means it supports modern authentication. Next step is to configure conditional access. So conditional access allows us to do conditions on the two-factor. This is what enables us to have multi-factor without breaking the user experience. So what we want to do is we only require multi-factor if you come from an unknown or not compliant device. We can apply zero trust network, meaning do not set up your multi conditional access setting to trust your network. Think that your network is not secured and make sure that you only trust the managed devices. Also, we need to enable the new baseline policy for admins in the portal. It's already in there for all of you to just click enable. Make sure you accept the break the glass admin in that policy. And also, uh, there is a plan to release a baseline for all users as well. That's coming later. I don't know when, but it's coming. And now allowing to do this much easier than I say today even. And also, we enable a specific conditional access policy to block all legacy authentication to all services. And I also normally block Exchange ActiveSync. So let's do a quick demo. So as you can see here, I have four different conditional access policies. So let's start with the first one. This is a baseline policy that's in all your tenants already. And you can see here, I excluded the break the glass admin. But also, I have excluded the sync engine user. For surprise, surprise, that user is actually an admin too. So you just enable this policy without excluding that user, your sync is going to stop working if you have a hybrid identity setup using Azure AD Connect. This is all you need to enable multi-factor on admins. So the next policy is to block legacy authentication. I apply this to all users. For some reason, I was not enable, able to do this on the all user tab. It fails to save. Um, but what we do here is that we include other clients. Other clients means basic and legacy authentication. That is POP, SMTP, IMAP, all, all kind of legacy services is blocked with this policy. And then we do block access. OK, that was one too much. Why is that video starting? OK. So the next one is where we actually have the MFA policy with the device exception. I don't know why the video didn't play. But what basically what I've done under conditions here is that I have set up to require to uh, apply to uh, all platforms that, that's in there and also all apps. 
and here we do the grant access based on either the device in compliant or the device is hybrid AD joint or the device is to require multi-factor authentication. And based on that, we require one of the selected controls, not all, important. But if we require all, they will always have MFA. So the, the last one is a policy where we block Exchange ActiveSync. We do this on Exchange Online, all platforms, and one only Exchange ActiveSync. This needs to be in a separate policy, by the way. The same as the block legacy authentication needs to be in a separate policy. So now we have those four configured and enabled in our tenant. Right now, no user will get in without multi-factor because we don't have what? We don't have Intune. So now we need to configure Intune, right? So Intune is also pretty simple to set up for our scenario. We're going to make a few configuration policies to configure the device the way we want them to. But most importantly, we need to have compliance policies. This is what we measure against when we see if the device is allowed to access the service or not. So we set up a compliance policy, and then we will have a compliant device. So I've created for all platforms in my environment. If there is a platform you don't support, don't, don't create a compliance policy for it, and that device will not be able to get in without using multi-factor all the time. Also, down here is a policy setting for the service who says if there is a device that's not targeted for a compliance policy, he is per, per definition not compliant. So what we want to achieve, of course, is that we have an enrolled device that is compliant. Based on that, we can qualify that this user does not need to use multi-factor authentication. So where are we now? We have a break the glass admin for emergencies, right? We have modern authentication on all our services. We have con conditional access configured, and we have control of the devices through Microsoft Intune. So let's take a look at the end user experience, how this, this is going to look. So again, a little short demonstration of how this can be. On the left side, I have a Windows PC that's joined to the Azure Active Directory. On the right side, I have an unknown device. So what I'm doing now is that I'm going to open up a web browser to log on to office.com. On the enrolled computer, you will see that the experience is totally seamless. It's not only no MFA, but the logon is instantly and you're seam seamlessly signed directly in. On the unknown computer, I would need to enter the username, password, and then I have the multi-factor authentication because we know, don't know about this device. But he will still get in based on the setup we have done in this scenario. So both users get in or this user gets seen on both devices, but on the device we don't control, we will require multi-factor. This means the user over here are staying productive on all services. He doesn't even know that we have enabled multi-factor authentication because he's never prompted on this device, which is his work device he uses all the day. So to just take a look at what really happens in the back end, because we created one policy that I'm sadly I didn't was able to show you how I did. Uh, but in the Act, Azure Active Directory signing logs, we can see that we have two logons. One is marked, and that is from the unknown device. So the policy is called MFA policy with device exception. And the grant control is requiring multi-factor authentication with success. So I did multi-factor and I got in. If you look at the other logon, it's the same policy, the different logon, and the grant control is required compliant device. And the result is still success. So 
This meaning we have a really good user experience enabling multi-factor authentication. So the end result here is pretty easy. Users are only challenged with multi-factor on unknown or, or not compliant devices. So how you define what is compliant for you? You can have all kinds of security requirements. You can require Defender ATP to be uh, secure. You can require to have, um, yeah, long password, BitLocker, all that kind of stuff. Zero trust network, and this is important. We actually don't trust the local network with this setup. So it doesn't matter where you are. If you are in your office on your corporate network, or you are on Starbucks drinking coffee, we don't care. And this is how it needs to be, because we can't trust the corporate network anymore. And doing this with multi-factor and conditional access make this zero trust thought really easy to implement. MFA is enabled on all logons with no legacy backdoors. This is also important because conditional access does not actually apply the norm, all the other conditions does not apply to legacy authentication. So if, for, if you forget to do the block legacy authentication, that means you can log on to, for, for example, Exchange Web Services without multi-factor, and then you're kind of broken. Admins will always be challenged with multi-factor with this setup. The baseline policy, there is no device exception there. There is no check for compliant device because we always want the admins to be challenged for multi-factor. The other thing is that if you actually use privileged identity management, the admins are not challenged for MFA when they log on because at that time, they are not an admin. But then it requires multi-factor to elevate. So you need to use multi-factor to elevate into an admin role. So if you have it, privileged identity management and you don't see the multi-factor when you log on, that's why. So this is the end result, and this is how we can enable multi-factor authentication the right way without breaking user productivity on the way. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Any questions, just come here and I can take them on the side here. <laughs>